Okay, so let's consider now, we've looked at a few things. We've looked at position, we've looked at how we get our V, V, that's the wrong, that's V. What I mean is how we get our rotational uh, coordinate and our rotational velocity. And we saw also that the further that you move away from the center, the larger the speed is, yet all of them, all of these points have the same rotational velocity. Okay, now we want to we look at the change in these velocities. Okay, we know that as, let's pick this point, as this point moves around the circle, in the circular path, its direction is constantly changing. Okay, even though we are working with constant uh, speed, right? We're looking at a constant speed. Just because the direction of this velocity vector is changing the whole time, we can say that this velocity is accelerating. So the velocity of an object in circular motion constantly changes direction. And because it changes direction, there is an acceleration to it. Okay? So it says objects in circular motion have a non-zero acceleration even if they are moving at constant speed. And, I, and I've said this now a couple of times. Even though the magnitude of these velocity vectors remains constant, the direction is changing, and because the direction is changing, it is accelerating. So let's look at um, the acceleration vector. So let's consider, remember the dot is the axis of rotation. This uh, circular arrow shows, um, it shows that Counterclockwise is positive, change in, the, uh, in, the, in this coordinate, rotational coordinate. So let's consider, we have our position, there's the puck there, and there's the puck, and it's moving in a circular, in circular motion. That is position vector i, and that is position vector final. And we know that the velocity is always tangent to this curve. So it's tangent over there, it's perpendicular to this vector, and it's tangent and it's tangent to the curve and perpendicular to that vector there. Okay. Now, what, let's, look, let's find delta V. What is delta V? Um, delta V is simply your V final minus V initial. Okay. So we, if we want to find the change in velocity. We want to find how does this velocity change from this point to that point. And as you can see, remember the magnitude is the same, the speed is the same, constant speed, but the direction has changed. So what we can do is, let's see, maybe I can just quickly draw this, because I think this is uh, very important. Let me just move down here. So we had, we had our velocity there, that's V initial, then it moved to there, uh, it moved along this kind of path like that. And there we had velocity final. So it's constant speed, constant speed. So the magnitudes remain are the same with these. But what we do is we're trying to find delta V. And we know that delta V is V final minus V initial. Okay? Or we can say that V final is, if we rearrange, we get V initial plus delta V. But either of these work. So what you do is, let's, let's look at this second equation here. You take V final, just doing basic um, addition of vectors. Take V final, let me erase that. And let's, so that's V final. And we take V initial, okay? And um, v, v final must equal V initial plus delta V. So what must I add to delta V in order to get V final? I've got to add, I've got to add this vector here. That is my delta V. So V initial is is there's my v initial i put it there i take my v final i put it there okay 
And so V initial plus delta V must be the same. It must end up at the same point as V final. So what is my delta V? My delta V, if you look at this motion, my delta V is pointing in that direction. Delta V is pointing in that direction. So what does that mean? It means, as you can see, there's my delta V. So my velocity is changing. And we know that if we divide this delta V by delta T, we're going to get our average acceleration. So our average acceleration is pointing in the same direction as delta V. Okay? Um, so what is this telling us? It's telling us that as, as the particle changes its direction, it's accelerating towards, it's, it's accelerating towards the center. It's accelerating towards the center. And this is known as centripetal acceleration. Okay? All right, let's see what else it's saying. Let's see what else it's saying. Okay. An object ex executing circular motion at constant speed has an acceleration of constant magnitude that is directed towards the center of its circular path. That's what I was, um, that's what I was saying now. Now, just one quick thing here, which is very important, is that if you keep decreasing this delta t, you keep making it smaller and smaller and smaller, so that we measure your, your delta v over smaller and smaller uh, time intervals, this becomes your instantaneous acceleration. Okay? Your instantaneous acceleration. And what's interesting here is it is perpendicular to the velocity v. So this is specifically for um, circular motion. Okay? Alright, good, good for now.